To use the Spin to Win template, all you need to do is enter the questions and the answers. To begin, the first thing you should do is save the file under a new name. So I'm going to go to the Save button in the toolbar. Since the template is read only, you're not allowed to save it under the same name. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to type in the name for my Spin to Win review game. So I'm going to enter Spin to Win World War II Review and click Save. Now all I need to do is enter the questions and the answers for the review game. In this game, there are 10 different values or point totals ranging from 100 to 1000. For each of the point totals, you can have a total of three questions. Let's go ahead and enter the questions for the 100 point total selection. To do this, I'll scroll down in my page sorter tab to the questions group and click on the first question for 100 points. I'm going to enter the first question by double clicking on the question text object to go into edit mode. Then I'm just going to select the text and type in my first question. Who was the leader of France during World War II? And then I click back in my workspace. The answers will be contained underneath the gray cover. To reveal the answers, I would just touch or click on the gray cover. However, to edit the answer, I need to first move the gray cover out of the way. Let me move to a different page and come back so my animation is reset. To move the cover, you click and drag and simply move it out of the way and then you can double click on the answer text object to go into edit mode, select the text and type in the answer. In this case, De Gaulle. And then I can click back into my workspace and then click and drag the gray cover back into place. It's helpful to use the alignment guides to center your cover. Now, if I touch on the gray cover, it'll reveal the answer. All you need to do next is go to each of the question pages and follow the same procedure. It helps to have your questions and answers prepared before you begin editing the Spin to Win template. Let's take a quick look at one way to play the game. I'm going to click on my home button to go to the main spinner page. To use the Spin to Win game, students would touch on the Spin button and then when they're ready, they would touch on it again to stop the spinner. In this case, the spinner landed on a 400 point question. To go to the 400 point value page, you can either touch on the number 400 in the spinner below the white selection arrow, or you can touch on the corresponding 400 block. It may be a little bit easier to touch on the blocks depending on which grade level is using the spin to win game. I'm going to click on the 100 point value link so you can see the change that we made. So I touch on the 100 color block and now students have a selection between questions 1, 2, and 3. In this case, the students would touch on one of the questions and then touch on the star to go to that question. Here's the question we already created. They would try to answer the question touch on the gray cover to see if they're correct. Then they can touch on the home button and then go to the scoreboard. If they got that correct, they can change their score for the team simply by dragging the number digits into the correct location. In this case, we're going to add 100 to team D and then I'm going to go back home. If the spinner lands again on 100, they can go to the 100 point value page and you can see that question one has already been selected. So they would need to choose one of the other questions. 
In this case, if they touch on question number three, the cover is removed, and then they touch on the star to go to that question page. If you touch on the star on any of the question pages, it will return to the main point value page. Be very careful when you're changing your template that you don't touch on the covered blocks. They're very difficult to get back into place. If you do accidentally touch on one of the colored blocks, you can click and drag on a hidden cover and move it out of the way. Then you can click and drag on the cover, which currently is flipped, and touch it to move it back into place. You can click and drag to make sure that it's placed precisely where it needs to be. And then you can click and drag to move the cover back into place. When you move the cover back into place, you need to make sure that the very top of the cover comes all the way to the bottom of the white question blocks. If it doesn't, the blocks won't be hidden entirely behind the cover. I'll go ahead and show you that again and place the white covers back over questions two and three. I'm going to click and drag the cover until I can see the white blocks underneath. Then I can click and drag the block up above, touch on the block so it now displays correctly. I'm going to move the other block, touch on it so it's displaying correctly. I'm going to click and drag and move the hidden cover so it just comes to the top of the white question blocks. Then I'm going to click and drag and make sure my covers are placed precisely where I need them. Since this is a difficult process, I recommend not to experiment with the question blocks when you're creating your template. However, during gameplay, they can be used so you know which questions have already been selected. If you do want to practice, just make sure you save your file first, and then when you're done, just open up the file again. I'm going to click home to go back to my main spinner page, and I want to encourage you to share any of the spin to win review games that you create. Remember, sharing is caring.